Okay. So uh, uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Mr. Gino Andreas, this morning for our yes. startup masterclass. So um, today we're going to spe be speaking with Mr. Gino. He's got decades of experience, almost almost 15 years of experience here in Bali, working across the industry in marketing, at magazines, and at Hard Rock, and in uh, sport brands like Oakley and also Quicksilver. So I think this is really, really cool. And uh, we're delighted to have this, this opportunity to speak with you. Um, so just to get things started, uh, what, what would you say is sort of like the one thing, actually, where, where would we begin with this? What would you say is the one thing that summarizes maybe your career? If there was like this one theme that keeps on appearing throughout your your progress in in your career, what what would you call that? Uh, I would say this is a uh, an interesting field of active sport, active lifestyle marketing. I would say that. Mm -hmm. And uh, but going back, first of all, please just call me, address me by name. No sir, no pa. I just like you know. oh, okay. <laughs> just keep it casual. We just keep it casual. Okay. We just keep it fun. Sure, 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 sure. I just, I truly, I truly believe in egalitarians. It's like oh, it's all everyone. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just like Gino, and that would be perfect. Okay, so, dude. Yeah, yeah. Back, back, back to it. So it's just, it's more like what I love and what I'm uh, been doing for all this time is, it's more like, I would say, entertainment, active, and sports marketing to be general okay and it's it's interesting world to be honest i'm telling you i, d I bet and speaking yeah. of entertainment you were you were one of the editors of uh i think the largest entertainment magazine at the time right which was the beat and i remember yeah. i remember seeing the beat everywhere whenever there was uh i know i know all of us probably don't go to nightclubs anymore although I, <laughs> but uh but but the uh, the beat was actually quite a interesting place. That's where I found about everything that was going on. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if there was a hotel opening, or if there was a if there was a happy hour or a sunset special, that was it was like the Instagram of its time almost. Like that's where everything was happening. And exactly, I'm kind of curious about like like the the community building process and the, the PR process actually of that. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. like how is it to what is it like to organize everyone around this particular magazine and what 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 makes the magazine what whenever I remember the beat you guys had award ceremonies you guys had a lot of events for the magazine mm -hmm. itself like what yep. made the magazine so such like a center point in the Bali community well we're talking about like back then the uh, social media is not so active even though they are already like myspace and the early days of Facebook <laughs> and then uh it's 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 still the heart the 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 print media still still play massive roles mm -hmm. and also that become the hubs and also the the center of information for what's happening around town especially for the party and entertainment side and we have a very a small multitask unit on on our editorial team Mm -hmm. because we believe uh, small but multi-talented people is way more efficient and easy to drive rather than big, massive team. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> uh, we, our magazine was like twice a month issues. Mm -hmm. So every two weeks, we, we have a meeting at the office. It's like, okay, this is what's going to happen next week. This concert is coming up and then who's going where and who's doing interview to who and uh, and then we have to be creative also with the content which it's not always about party but also a little bit of the business side like we talk to the chef like what makes you interested like working at ultimo what's the special what what make your pasta is way better rather than the <laughs> pasta over there it, it's, it's creating more more content mm -hmm. is that the word for like these days the content <laughs> and, and it's just, <laughs> okay. and, and it just it's it really like uh what you call it like interesting like we, we how how we dig about the information and make the readers goes like oh wow even the chef of kudeta when 
he's having his day off, he's going to this warung and that warung because this warung have the best sambal and that warung have the best chicken rice. So um, it just making things like that. Got it. So this sounds like a, a lot of really creative. This sounds like investigative, like journalism. You're going out there to to sort of really yeah. get the the pieces of information that are not readily available to to the general public. Um, okay. How do you decide who actually? And and this maybe is coming from um, Shithia's side. She's working on PR right now, so she's like thinking, uh-huh. uh, "How can I get like the story of our company published?" What what sort uh-huh. of like did you see from your perspective? Um, on stories that were worthwhile to publish and stories that were just mm-hmm. like, eh, eh, okay, they're asking me to put uh-huh. them in the magazine, but but no. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, was there, <laughs> was there any flavors that actually get a yes versus a no? Uh, well, first thing first, we have to make our advertiser happy. Of course. So the first, uh, the first priority would be them. So okay. let's say Kudeta is our biggest advertiser so we talked with their marketing managers about how to prepare for the upcoming summer party I see. but but on the other side we also have to make it balanced about we need to run a, a unique story that make this mark uh, this this magazine not so look like a press release from all the advertiser we have to keep <laughs> our our edgy side uh-huh. like about uh <clears throat> For instance, like, oh, it's uh, Nyepi is going to be next two weeks. Let's talk about the Ogohogo. Which Banjar have the craziest Ogohogo? Let's talk about, let's talk with the conceptor of the Ogohogo. Right. So it's the percentage would be like 70% for advertiser and 30% we keep the, the edgy side, which some most of the time the edgy side deliver us more readers and uh, bringing a potential customer or advertiser in the future. Got it. Got it. Exactly. I, see, I see. That actually kind of reminds me of how Google search works. You got your organic result and you yes. have your advertised result. And it, it sounds, it sounds like, like even in, in, in printed, um, printed media, you're using a very simple mm-hmm. strategy. Like part of it is editorial and part of it is, is ads. Okay. Well, that's, that's really cool. Um, let me turn it to the floor to, let's see, uh, Shintia. Shintia, any questions for, uh, any questions for Gino? Um, yes, sir, actually. Um, yes, thank you uh, for the time. Uh, hi, yeah. Gino. And then I have uh, read about your, uh, what is that, about your stories and experience, especially in the sport company that you are in right now. And then yeah. you are more than like, doing the planning and also executing uh, some event as well. And then yeah. I saw that, that that's why, that's how you build the branding of uh, your sport company right now. And then I just want to know that how actually uh, your company right now, you provide value to the wow. customers to mm-hmm. improve the customer experience. Okay, really good question. So uh, the sports company actually, uh, the, the one that I'm looking, uh, that I'm uh, helping, I'm working, it's like Oakley and Quicksilver. It's more like a, a side stream active brand. It's okay. It's more. It's it's not like Nike, but it's more like a segmented a niche market. So if we're talking about Quicksilver, it's more like people who surf or enjoy the beach, and also the uh, the sub brand of the Quicksilver is DC Shoes. It's a it's a skateboarding brand. So. We also helping that. So in uh, answering your question is how we deliver a value. We deliver experience for the community and the market itself. So if we're talking about, uh, for instance, the DC Shoes, it's a skateboarding company. So the first is we engage with the community because I'm telling you the skateboarding community is really uh, a tight knit community it's really tight so uh no matter so in saying in general no matter how good you have the product your shoes if you don't tap into the community first they will be like like who are you you are not skateboarder they're like you're just selling shoes they're not going to welcome you so you have to work from inside out so when we try to make an event we contact the uh in here we call the psb like persatuan skateboarding bali the Bali Skateboarding Association. We 
invite them just like, hey, let's have a lunch. And we, let's say in the next six months, we will have a launching of the global shoes, like this XYZ series, uh, a pro series from this famous skateboarder in Australia. So let's deliver this message. Let's, let's work on how to deliver this message to the community. We're going to make an event, let's say in, we will make an event, one of the biggest event that we had is in Jakarta at Gelora Bung Karno. So we work with the uh, Skateboarding Indonesia and Skateboarding Jakarta about like, hey, this is the, uh, the plan. We will make an event, we will make a skate jam, and then we will fly in the professional skateboarder to do a demonstration and then we make the artwork and then we just asking them like, hey, you are all VIP. The community of the skateboarding in Jakarta is all VIP. This is the ticket for you. And you know what? Can you do us a favor? This is our artwork. This is our e-flyer. Do you mind to blast it to, through your social media? And then you will get the front row seat. And whoever on your family and friends circle, this is the, this is the ticket. This is the guest list. And we will have uh, a great show with the band. And also at the end of the show, we have like a, a giveaway, a raffle about this is the, the new shoes. And then by that time, we, we executing the event, we will have like, like massive backdrop about the message. We deliver the message. So we gather the mass and we just like bombard them with all the brand. But it's like a brainwash, make them experiencing like oh wow the shoes is really cool and this is how the skateboarding the skateboarders wear the shoes this is how crazy action they deliver so like even though uh the spectators let's say 40 percent of the spectators is not the skateboarders they will see the sho they will see the shoes and they saw the action they will be like wow that's a cool shoes i want one wow so it's it's engaging like like involving the market into the scene and if we're talking about the skateboarding it's easier to reach the market because everybody can wear the shoes even though you are not a skateboarder we deliver uh, we launched the event in jakarta people in aceh can buy the shoes because they see the the live youtube or the the video recap of that event it's a little bit more tricky when it's dealing with quicksilver because quicksilver is a surfing brand and not all area in Indonesia uh, is accessible for surf and not everybody can surf. So it's a little bit more meticulous to work on, on how the marketing. Cool. Wow. <coughs> that's, that's a very great story. Uh, back to Shinti, any follow-up questions? Um, e yes, sir. Actually, like, uh, so if I'm not wrong here, so you try to build uh, this brand uh, to the customer by showing the experience. So uh, there is kind of like a track to our brand. Am I right? Yes. yes. Oh, okay, then. Um, okay, I think that's, that's all there. Okay, great. Let's, uh, let's open up the floor for more questions. Uh, let's go to Ghani. Any questions on Ghani's side? Thank you, sir. Uh, my question will be, okay, so, uh, uh, you know, I already told that uh, how to it through event. I mean, through mm -hmm. offline activity. But how, how, how in, in in this current situation, how to do an online uh, mm -hmm. activity or event? So, mm -hmm. do you have any uh, experience or something that you you would like to share? Well, this at this stage with this uh, like a uh, very strict regulation about like uh, mass gathering yeah yeah at this moment honestly we still like lay low and we're still scouting the situation mm. because we don't want to not just we don't want to not just breaching the protocols but we don't want to be named we uh like get a bad name because oh yeah. this is a new cluster from a brand that brand that make an event we don't want to be related like that because, you know, everybody know bad news spreads like a wildfire. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, so at this moment, we there's more into like creating uh, a creative content, mm -hmm. which involving only small team. Like for instance, we do like a a surf trip 
yes. to Sumbawa or to Lombok. So it's only need like three servers, one videographers. Oh. We just give them like a one Kijang Innova and petrol money and send them all the way to Lombok. Mm -hmm. And then they just making the content, making mm -hmm. the engagement. And while doing that, we also give them like the latest product. So it's I give see. the highlight. So it's more like uh, cr not just creating awareness, but maintaining that uh, the awareness that, hey, we are still here. Just because the, on uh, the offline event cannot be done at this moment, mm -hmm. but we're still doing some, the typical extreme crazy things that our brand related to. I see. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Let's go next to Rizal. Rizal, any questions on your side? Um, yeah, I, I see, uh, you know, you're working as a GR, G, GSR and also uh, as a marketing manager. But uh, my question is, um, right now we, we, we are working still uh, spirit as uh, GRR, which is from uh, PR and uh, marketing uh, as a part of uh, marketing site. But uh, yep. uh, when time uh, you connected the GS, uh, CSR and the uh, marketing to to build a sustainable, um, sustainable uh, marketing way to uh, I don't know to to market your your product to getting uh, people uh, more know about about uh, your product. Okay, uh, this one connecting with the CSR, like all this, uh, the big company like these days they are showing the the giving back either it's to to, to the community or to the world to the environment. And our CSR program back then is we work together with Coca-Cola in Garuda, Indonesia. And we have the program called Beach Cleanup. And also the annual big event is the Bali Big Eco Weekend. So the Beach Cleanup is practically uh, the three brands, Quicksilver, Coca-Cola, and Garuda, Indonesia. We, we collect, we give out money. And then with that money, we buy like uh, attractors with the beach cleaner uh, rake pulling at, at the back if you see in Kuta Beach and also we pay salaries to the beach cleaner team which consists of like 14 person that clean up the beach every day and give them the uniform and then of course when we give out CSR it, we put a big branding on the tractor it, it just like it's just a normal thing to do and we just do that and then the annual the the annual event is usually happen in august it's called the bali big echo weekend it consists of uh the learning and also the education about the environment like the trash we practically collect the trash from the rainy season that wash up at the beach and put it on a on a big like probably seven by seven cage at the beach all the trash during the rainy season like bamboo plastic bottles we put it in there and we we display it to the crowd like this is the trash that happens ransack our beach every rainy season. So do your part, just like simply throw the, uh, the trash into the bin, to a designated place, not to the river, because we are the one who, you know, this rubbish end up at the beach. And uh, one of the, the form of our CSR, rather than uh, apart from the beach cleanup, we also support the uh, BTS, BTSCs like Bali sea turtle conservation. It's the conservation for the sea turtle that have in Kuta, because there are, there are certain month in the year the turtle lays eggs in Kuta Beach and Legian. So we have officer that you know monitor the turtles because the turtle usually come up to the beach at one a.m. and they lay eggs. So the the range we call it the rangers. The rangers come and wait until the process is done and then collect the egg and then bring it to the sanctuary because you know to protect them either from poachers or wild animals and then we will have the release of the baby turtles every let's say once in a month and it attracts a lot of uh mass also a lot of people and with that tapping with that csr we also make our merchandise like we're making a t-shirt like save the turtles with the quicksilver design a really cool design and then we put a story on the name tag or on a or on a like a pop card like uh 35 to 40 percent of the sales of this product go straight to the conservation 
So that's what really like helping the awareness. So people not just buying the t-shirt, so they, oh, I will help this conservation. I want to buy the t-shirt. So I get the good t-shirt and then part of my money goes to this conservation. So that's, that's, that's how to engage and involve the market with, uh, with our marketing and also CSR. Really cool, really cool. Okay, um, Rizal, any follow-up questions on your side? Mm, probably it's like um, uh, you do a soft selling, right? Not, not like a hard selling. And uh, yep. if I might know, uh, how many ratio from your uh, CSR, uh, uh, your your activity is uh, like like uh, how many ratio you doing uh, your uh, CSR activities and how many ratio you uh, doing your uh, selling activities basically? Well, to be honest, the CSR probably takes like not that not that much. Probably the, like maximum only thirty percent because it's 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 just another channel that we build the awareness and. Uh, uh, the caring from the market and also uh, showing the effort from the brand that, hey, let's take care of our world, take care of our environment. And this is the way from uh, if you want to help us. It's pretty more like the the percentage, more give or take on that section. Okay. All right. Thank you, Rizal. Uh, let's go to Aldo. Aldo's got some questions over that are, I think, fresh. Well, welcome back, Aldo. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, actually, I want to ask. Uh, I want to follow up about the CSR program too. So I th I see that this uh, CSR program is uh, indirectly impacted to our to the brand awareness itself for your pro uh, for your product. And is there any like uh, events that you that you are doing for this uh, for this uh, indirect uh, brand awareness impact? So I see. Also, I see on your LinkedIn that you are also. Uh, working with Philas Association, like tell us how can you directly uh, match the Philas Association with your marketing uh, strategies? Well, for the market, uh, for the Philas, it's more like uh, we just maintain our relationship. So it's it's not like uh, we make a partnership and we generate sales or income on the next month. A lot of things that we do, it just it just start with the partnership. And if it's fr uh, like fruiting, like giving us a, a profit at the end of the day, it will be bonus because uh, a lot of our profit, it's not just about money coming in. Of course, we need money coming in, but yeah. it's in a lot of way, we just maintain our relationship like for the villas and also with the CSR, we work with the government about, uh, hey, we've been doing this, like uh, Coca-Cola, Garuda and Quicksilver has been doing this for the beaches. So please, can you give us a helping hand we need a truck. We need a truck to move uh, the rubbish. So it's just like we're giving a helping hand. So please, let's do your part also. It's more like engaging like that. And with the government also, of course, we sometimes they come and knock on our door. Hey, can we have like a this amount of shirt because we're going to Jakarta for a for a study tour or leisure? Like, hey, I'm happy to help because at the end of the day, we also need their help. But like. You know, either it's on the CSR or like in a permit if we're doing an event. I see. So the partnership itself, uh, you consider it as, as a value of your company and also about uh, how you gain a profit itself. Okay. I, I think that's a good, that's a good takeaway. And I have a questions also about uh, social media. So uh, in, in earlier, I, hear, I heard about uh, you are focusing more on this um, press uh media itself the, uh, uh then uh how is how do you budget your time on social media and how and uh wh what do you do with your social media accounts of your brand well on the social media is a little bit tricky because we have our own team to run that one but talking about the content and managing because this is an international brand. So we need to keep the balance between the global campaign that whatever the global Instagram put on their channel, we have to follow them. But every now and then we keep an organic content from our own section, from our own region, because like it or not, the market, the local market, they love local hero. Like for instance, uh, okay. Like Valentino Rossi wearing this 
kind of ugly sunglass. Cool, everybody know Valentino Rossi. But when you sponsor one of the local motocross rider and use them on the social media, hey, this is Aldo, our fastest motorbike racers, and he wears this Oakley. It's more engaging to the local market because who doesn't love local hero? Everybody love local hero. And need and local hero is closer to the local market because the market can meet you at Indomart, like, oh, you are the, the Oakley riders. The engagement is really valuable. So that's how we that's how we keep the balance between the content, like if we're talking about the content of the social media. I see. Okay, maybe to Cynthia. Yeah. Oh yes, uh, thank you, Aldo and uh, Gino. Well, actually, I'm uh, pretty interesting about your program on the uh, beach cleaning. Uh, since mm -hmm. actually we do have the same, and mm -hmm. we have done it uh, on uh, for the first time uh, on December, but mm -hmm. we do, we done it in Nusa Penida Island. Okay. So yes, uh, I just want to ask here, like, uh, I'm pretty interesting, like. Uh, Actually, I just, I just like how we uh, join or we participate mm -hmm. in your program of CSR because mm -hmm. I saw that a lot of big brands that mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Garuda Indonesia, you mentioned it, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. your brand itself, uh, the Quicksilver. Mm -hmm. Is there any possibility um, to have a cooperation uh, mm -hmm. with you uh, at this uh, cleaning beach uh, because mm -hmm. uh, we do have a very big community mm -hmm. in Nusa Penida. Uh, mm -hmm. The name is Tres Hero, uh, if you mm -hmm. think Tres Hero Indonesia. Yep. Uh, could, uh, could we like uh, join that and then how if we want to join that program? Okay, uh, so right now, frankly speaking, with this kind of situation, like Quicksilver and Garuda, we pull back from the CSR but our former partner coca-cola still actively doing that so if you're asking about how to tap into the community i can give you the number of the coca-cola person because they have a, a csr specialist manager doing that and they, they also the last time i heard they also do uh how did you call it a trash separation and recycling so they go to the eco bali recycle center where they separate the trash and then making like, you know, the collecting all the plastic bottle and do recycle and do something for the end result, like giving the second life to the bottle, which is really cool. That will be really good. And then I think yeah. I will connect with you to link in after this, yeah. No problem. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. Wow, okay, we've explored a lot of topics here. So <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of actually curious um, about actually moving through industry disruption, which is, oh, mm. hey, Gabby. Um, I'm, because I, I remember, I think you've, you've moved through three disruption cycles, or two disruption cycles, right? There's been a mm -hmm. disruption cycle from like printed media to online. And I think there's yep. been, uh, I, I, I've heard, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say this, but I don't surf yet. Mm -hmm. I, I, have a hard time, I have a hard time swimming sometimes. But, mm -hmm. but what I have seen is I, I've heard people say that like the surf industry in general has been seeing sort of a, uh, a decline in turmoil yeah. yeah turmoil and so maybe you can tell us a little bit about what it looks like on on that side like what does it look like when you're trying to because right now is a big disruption in travel in bali and and how how do you manage that process of of disruption how do you like like try to identify it could you have seen it earlier like what are what are sort of the leading indicators that that something isn't 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 going to happen right mm. Okay, if we're talking about the, the turmoil that happens, like put the COVID aside, but the turmoil like the, the, the let's say the decline, let's honestly talking about the decline of the surf industry, is what I personally think, what creates that thing, that, that, that phenomena happens back in the day, is during the big, the heyday of this brand, people like, we only have the stores in Bali, like the Quicksilver Billabong Ripkel, we only have the stores in Bali, most of, mostly. So people coming from Jakarta, from Jogja, from everywhere, when they come to Bali, they wanna, be, they wanna buy their things. And then that leads us unconsciously falling into trap, like, oh, people coming to Bali and then buy their thing. Why don't we just like open our store in Jakarta 
in it, which is cool, but that make it more uh, truthfully saying, make the brand overrated. And, oh. and also, uh, okay. makes the market feel like uh, they, they have their own consciousness, like, hey, I'm not a surfer. Why should I wear that brand? They, they, they start to have that kind of a thinking system. Uh -huh. And the second trap, the second trap that we fell into, honestly, that we don't realize back in the day, once we go reaching open store in Jakarta, in the malls, it, it make us in the same fighting pit with other brand, not from the surf, but with other brand on the same 50-50 price wise. Like we are in a fighting with H&M. We are in a fighting with Zara, I see. which which honestly speaking, their brand is like more variety, more uh, user friendly. Sure, 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 sure. And and the range of the season, like the, the, the product update is really fast. Yeah. You can have the new product every, like every quarterly, like four times in a year. Mm -hmm. And then they are like mass production, so they can sell it like way cheaper. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Got it. Interesting. So that, that is kind of the, yeah, it is kind of this kind of trap that we let's say we fell into. Okay, I'm I'm going to I'm going to bring up a competitor then in that case because I remember at the same time um, that that this was happening, there was there was that brand Deus that was sort of coming up in Changu, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and I guess from what you just told me, they went like I think the opposite way, right? So. This idea of, wow, I never thought about it this way. So as you're expanding, you're sort of diluting your focus. You're not actually expanding. You're sort of, your brand is getting getting tarnished in a way by, by having it, you know, juxtaposed against H&M. And it's now, it doesn't have a core audience that really is is passionate about it. Like like when you talked mm. about the DC shoes, you have like mm. these kids and you're, you're really creating this strong energy around the sense of community, and that community is in driving the interest and the 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 propagation of of your brand. And and but but if you don't, oh wow, that's interesting. But but if surfing is not relevant in Jakarta in a mm. direct way, and if people buy mm. into that, then it's like, did they? Why did they buy it for? Right? How relevant is mm. it to their lifestyle there? But if they come to yep. Bali, then it's like they're coming to like. It's like when you go to the like, Apple store in in Apple, right? You, you kind of like, yeah. oh, this one's different, right? This one's like more more charged up. So, wow, I, I, I never thought of it that way. And then and then I think what Dios was doing was the same thing, right? About like doing mm -hmm. the community first, getting that mm -hmm. really passionate sort of center around your community, and then and then once you have that, it drives out sort of naturally. Wow. It, 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 exactly. It, okay. Wow. Okay. I, I never thought of it that way. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And, and continuing, Jing, about your 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 topic about Deus, like, the, uh, I honestly talk, I honestly speak that they are like they're doing it smart. They they take a certain certain period, certain age of surfing back in the day, like in the sixty or seventies, about the That's attitude cool, yeah. and the the style of the of the clothing, uh -huh. the the very short short board short that's showing a lot of tie, and right. then, which. Like, at the beginning, people goes like, "Whoa, that's a lot of that's a lot of tie," right. and, then, and then they're making that, and then they also, as we all know, they're making a motorbikes, custom motorbikes, right? And then that's that's where their their money come from. Uh -huh. Most of the money come from, and and now these days, the main market, uh, uh, the main power of their income resource. I believe it's no longer on motorbike because you can find any other bank can do a better and cheaper motorbike than this. Yeah. But what they do, they're selling the product around that motorbike. They're selling helmet, they're selling t-shirt, they're selling leather wallet with chain. Mm -hmm. Those kind of accessories that uh, associate people with a cool bike. I'm a cool biker. They're making that. So that's right now they, they, uh, they generate the income. They're still making bikes, but to make one bike that worth of like eighty-five million to be sold once in a month, you can have it. You cannot have it like every month, right? Right. So they're selling this peripherals product that's supporting, which now become the main pillars 
of their business, I believe. But they're still doing the the competition to keep the brand coolness alive. Right. But this 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 product, rounded motorbike, it's the one generating uh, income for them. It, it sounds a lot like when you were doing the events, right? You sort of do the event. The event creates yep. a emotional, experiential connection with the exactly. with the sport, and then people people are buying souvenirs, aren't they? They're like they're buying something that that kind of bring them closer to that feeling of, of like, yeah, that, 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 that thing that, that sort of the, the product is almost a bridge to that emotional connection that you get. Wow. Exactly. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. That, that's, um, that's something else. Uh, okay. Let's, let's, uh, let's keep on exploring. So when, when you're at like all these, um, actually I kind of have a, I kind of have a general question about the surf brands in general between Bill Ball, Quicksilver, Rip Curl. Um, yep. You know, Surfer Girl, or I, I know they're kind of interrelated, but I, yep. I can't even tell the difference anymore between each brand. Um, okay, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Like, I mean, like when all the sort of top brands that are competing against each other have, I think they've all converged on a similar story. With actually mm-hmm. kind of like the exception of Dios. Dios, I think, created a, a sort of a unique story by adding that motorbike sort of component to their story and that, that nostalgia, mm-hmm. that, that sort of mm-hmm. hipster, like, like, you know, things were bad, better in your grandparents era. Um, yep. Was that maybe another reason for, let's say the, the confusion that people had about the surf industry was that, did it become hard to distinguish what was the difference between, let's say a Quicksilver, a Billabong, a Rip Curl and, and something else? Well, which, if you see, about, uh, if you're asking about the, the difference between, let's say, uh, they call it the big three, Quicksilver, Ripkel, and Billabong. Yeah. Uh, basically, we're selling the same surf beach lifestyle. But, but what, what, what drives the, the, the customers being loyal to one of the brands, it's more like a design and also the character of the brand itself. Mm-hmm. Like, like Ripkel, they call themselves the ultimate surfing company, mm-hmm. which, which is really cool, I think, because they claim they, they, they put down the flag that we are the, the ultimate surfing brand. Mm-hmm. And uh, Quicksilver, uh, we have the sticker like uh, the boat riding's boat riders company. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 watering down to the design of each brand. And just for the reference, the the update that I'm giving right now, the currently is Quicksilver buying out Billabo. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, uh, Quicksilver bought Billabong, but but we keep Billabong doing their thing with their character. We're not uh, like fusing our brand. We keep the brand. We keep the Billabong with, with their characters. So, two big giants now against this one. <laughs> against Rip Curl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and there's and there's a lot of the uh, how would you call it subordinate brand under. Quicksilver and Billabong. Like Quicksilver, they have DC for the urban life, which the skateboarders, right. and also Roxy for the women's. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I and, noticed is like and, Quicksilver added together creates a Roxy yeah. logo. Yeah. Exactly. That's why it looks like a heart. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And cool. that's, that's, that's really uh, a smart and really interesting thing for me. Like, uh, so they, uh, instead of making maybe called the Quicksilver Urban, just take a famous uh, urban brand, skateboarding brand. Mm-hmm. So the community is already there. The, right. the, the, the loyal follower of the brand already there. They don't need to know the DC is owned by who. They only need to know like the DC is still a core urban brand. That's it. We just don't, we just don't want to destroy the market that they already have. Got it. So we just keep the characters, running the characters with there and also, uh, we have the, what I call a really interesting, it's a age segregation product. <laughs> I personally call it in, okay. in Quicksilver. Uh-huh. So we have a brand in the brand in Quicksilver. Uh-huh. So there's a Quicksilver and there's a Quicksilver Waterman. Okay. So it's practically selling a, a same product, a very similar product, but with a different design and different quality. So mm-hmm. Quicksilver Waterman is a, a brand of the Quicksilver that we dedicate to those 
surfers or a Quicksilver wearer, Quicksilver loyal customer that already wearing Quicksilver when they were kids, oh. when they were like seven years old okay. or, or 14 years old. Right. And now they already grown up. They already have their own money or maybe they already have their own kids. So this is a Quicksilver Waterman for them. We have a more, a better quality t-shirt and a more like, uh, not call it retro, but more classical design. Like the Hawaiian shirt with the Hawa <laughs> Hawaiian Hawaiian shirt with the very very good material. Yep. Because I, I would wear that. that. I would wear that. <laughs> I'm looking at the brand oh. right now. Yeah, that's something I would wear. Yeah, it's for an older audience. Yes. <laughs> and and by doing that, it fr from outside it looks like oh wow why. Why Quicksilver making another brand inside of the brand? They're just going to cannibalize each other. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it's how we protect our customer. The, uh, protect, in, protect in what way? So the kids nowadays, 14 years old boy serving, they don't want to wear the same t-shirt like what their father wear. <laughs> they don't want to look like their dad. Right, right. And then... The dad, the, the one who already have their own income, they don't want to wear like a big logo or bright colored t-shirt like what their kids wear. Mm, interesting. So it's how we, we keep, you know, so uh, uh, my supervisor, the, the marketing manager from Australia, he told me that Quicksilver Waterman is for those people who wear Quicksilver during their kids and then we maintain our market so they are not going to other brands. Yeah. So they are not moving to other brands. So we keep them in our brand by making them another uh, a premium brand, premium line. Got it. Inside of that, it makes sense. Yes. It makes and a lot of the and a lot of the product of the Quicksilver Waterman is very, how do you call it? It's not just surfing because uh, when person already like thirty years old plus surfers, they try they tend to explore more about the ocean, whether it's like a stand-up paddling, either it's just like free diving, snorkeling, or whatever. And that also uh, watered down to our design, got it. to our post, to our poster, got it. Got it. our okay. in-store poster, just because it's how we translate it like that. You're, you're very right, you know, I totally understand that part. Like if, if you didn't evolve a product line to sort of, you know, keep with it, they would probably go to, Tommy Bahama, or they would go to like another brand that that offers that that thing. So no, I get that. It's you almost like you need to grow with your audience, right? So you have exactly. it's like almost like a school that never ends, right? You have kindergarten all the way to college to graduate school. Okay, that that's that's fascinating. Um, I've got I've got a few more questions, but if anybody has any questions, just just uh, chime in. I'm happy to to sub in. Uh, your questions for mine, so that that's perfectly cool. Yeah, but um, I had this question about about like heroes, um, mm -hmm. I think you've been working, a uh, local heroes, right? Mm -hmm. Like you've been working during, I think the golden era of, of the whole surf boom in Bali. And there's yeah. people like, like Ty Graham, that mm -hmm. I think he was a Billabong sponsored yeah. surfer. And then he became mm -hmm. the owner of Single Fin, um, yep. which is pretty heroic, I think. I think mm -hmm. we've all been to Single Fin, I hope. Uh, and, then, yeah. and then there's others like Mega, who opened his own place in Bingen, I think. And and so yeah. what have you seen in terms of those hero stories in the world of surf here in Bali? And and how have like the brands approached the heroes to get their sort of backing and get their get their um, I don't know, to get their support? Okay. All right. First thing first, from the the person, the 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 surfer side, everybody realized that we cannot surf as good as we were. You know, everybody grew up. Everybody will grow old. Yeah. Same thing with the skateboarders. Skateboarders even worse. They are prone to injuries yeah. worse than surfers. Yeah. They were slamming on the floor on the on the concrete walls. Yeah. So, so at some stage the bones gonna stop healing. <laughs> so like from from the surfers wise, it's really good for the brand to see how the person that we sponsored, but now also still doing that thing like surfing, but also evolving and then try to you know have another business, but not a conflicting one. But you know, like a really supportive, uh, supporting uh, a venue. Like say, for instance, like for Ty Graham, uh -huh. 
like the place of single fin. So we do our event like yearly. It's called the Uluwatu Challenge. That's right. Quicksilver surfing in Uluwatu. And at the end of the day of the competition, we have a party at single fin. So it's pretty much like a bread and butter. Mm. And for, and also uh, it gives us like a like a cradle of comfort. You know, if the riders having like a bar, we can have because it's also at the end it's supporting their his economy. That's right. Or the community economy on that area. That's right. And that's that's how we most of the time we do double dipping when we're doing the uh, the comp the surf competition in Uluwatu. Mm -hmm. When we do the uh, from the brand perspective. The competition is called Uluwatu Challenge, and it's it's not like a professional surfing sure. competition. Mm -hmm. It's like a charity surfing competition. So we we fly in the former world champion from Australia, like Mark Richard, back in back from the seventies. We have him in Bali to surf on that, and then we make. We pack. Uh, we make a, an artwork like a hey, surf with Mark Richard, three times world champion at World Water Challenge, and then F, and anyone who want to join the competition, they pay, if I'm not mistaken, one million for one for one person, mm -hmm. and then it gets them a T-shirt or a dinner. But and then we mention the money goes to Project Clean Uluwatu. That's a NGO. Uh, mm -hmm. company in Uluwatu run the local Uluwatu to keep the Uluwatu beach clean. They're making a, a trash containers, they're making a, a sewage water processor, so that money goes into that. And by doing that competition, uh, during the day of the competition, we did not uh, bring our own catering for the official. Mm -hmm. Instead, we buy from the local warung. So the local warung get their income also from us so we are not coming in to a certain place and we put down the flag and then we're going to run a competition and we're going to provide everything no we involve everyone like the local like one morning it's easily for us to buy like 150 jeffel for the official from this warung and then that warung get their income and for the lunch we buy like another 200 nasi goreng from that warung we pay cash and they still got their income. Nobody got hurt. We're not treading on someone else's toes. We don't want that to happen. Interesting. That's actually very fascinating. So what I'm constantly hearing is that community and marketing and this idea of storytelling, that, that seems to be the, the theme of all really good marketing, that you can't have a story unless you have some authentic, authentic truth, right? And you get your truth yes. from the community and then you're able to then propagate this truth. And I have, I have a question on this too, which is like, like I feel like all really good marketing relies on a fair bit of word of mouth, right? So your, your, your good people are going to say good things about you. But the word of mouth part is something that never really shows up in the analytics. And it becomes, it becomes hard, I think, in organizations to decide, well, how much budget are we going to plan on this? And how much word of mouth would we expect to get on this? So in sort of, in, in, I guess all your career in, in marketing at The Beat, um, Oakley and Quicksilver, has has this debate about like, okay, you know, the budget and then the mm -hmm. brand awareness and word of mouth and these things that are hard to measure, but I think they're so important at the same time mm -hmm. to actually getting a good message out to the, your, your audience. How many times mm -hmm. has that occurred? And what was the end resolution? What's the end sort of wisdom that we can gain from 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 these from these debates okay the debate is never ending i'm telling you <laughs> okay it's, it's always there and that's what make us challenge you know in a good way because when we ask for a an xyz amount of marketing budget at the beginning of the financial year we have to be able to justify why we need that much and how much impact it can deliver to our sales because Honestly, everybody at the end of the day, it, it just related to sales. It's always related to sales. So that's why uh, we never left the offline event because I believe the offline event is the one that engage emotionally more to the market rather than the social media. Mm -hmm. 
it's how you can experience like can you imagine uh, seeing a live circus and or comparing to see a live circus on your live insta which one deliver more thrill completely different yeah. Yeah. completely different and that's why we when we do a, like uh, a skateboarding event in jakarta launching of this particular type of shoes we already connect with the sales because marketing and sales okay they always fighting one another but at the end we have to relate well so when we about to launch an event we have to make sure to the sales like we will launch this shoes so i really hope that you stockpile that shoes on your store in jakarta right 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 <laughs> so we can so when we spend this amount of money of running event in jakarta making the awareness on how cool is the shoes how cool is the pants and how do you should wear the t-shirt over your head instead of just wearing it and then for the next three months we ask the sales the sales managers how's the impact of the sales of throughout the stores in jakarta that's, that's the easiest meter that we can use about uh, from the delivering the event see how the event really works or not and that's why we usually do the the thing called when it's for the shoes, we call it DC Asia Tour. I see. So we do in Medan. We do it at, at, the, at the epicenter of skateboarding in Indonesia, like Medan, Bandung, in Jakarta. I see, I see, I see. Okay, got it. Okay, so... And then uh, it's, like, it's, it's making the organic things. I, I get it. And, you know, as a, as, like, as a business person myself, I feel like, you know, sales are mm -hmm. the lifeblood of the company. But yet, maybe with teams, a lot of people feel uncomfortable selling stuff they don't you know like hustling can be be like like I, I i grew up on the hustle right so if i wanted to get something i would go out and i would try to to, to sort of navigate my way there would there be any words of advice for you to let's say our team or or just any team that's working on marketing like what is how important is the hustle to actually get that to connect and how do we as let's say creative people also get a sense of yeah this needs to tie together with and sort of, uh, you know, financial results. Okay. Well, the hustle is it's still a must. Mm -hmm. The hustle is a must, but you need to make uh, a reason why the hustle is worth to be listened by the potential customer. You have to have the story. And that, mm -hmm. uh, if we're relating back to the story with the mass production brand, that's the angle that we try to attack them to counter attack them right like we compete let's say by going by selling our product in jakarta it's automatically uh, put ourselves in the fighting with h m or zara which right. are on the same price point right but what they don't have is a storytelling they do not it's they a story not. behind the product <laughs> they do not they just put they just put another random baby photo on the wall <laughs> wearing a flannel t-shirt and make it look cool. There's no story in it. It's a story that drives, not a story that drives the sales, the marketing. Why, why should I wear this board shirt? Because this board shirt is made from five recycled plastic. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Yeah. The merchandising is so very make people, make, you have to, Yes, you have to. You have to justify the expensiveness of your product. Let's let's be brutal to it. Why why should I buy an Oakley sunglass that costs one point eight million, where I can get the same sunglass for uh, seventy five thousand at the copy slang Kuta? That's a good question. <laughs> so that's that's the justification, the the storytelling that that Oakley is not just protecting you from the sunlight. It's protecting your eyeball because it's tested from the high velocity, low impact, or the low impact, high velocity impact. So it protects your eyes. So, so people feel like worth it to buy this sunglass. And they will protect that sunglass with their life. <laughs> That's actually a good one. I, I, I remember the story of Oakley, actually. I remember the founder. The Oakley actually comes from my, my hometown. It was, a, it was an anagram for Oakland and Berkeley. So he created that 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 sort of uh -huh. uh, shortening, and he would. I think he started selling motorcycle gloves at first. Oh wow! Selling motorcycle gloves to people who were doing off-road motor and then motorcycle grip. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, 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 yeah. the grip. Yeah, the grip. The motorcycle grip. grip. And then it evolved from yeah. there. Um, that, that's the story, right? Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, okay, great, yes. great, great. This, this has been fantastic. Let, uh, yeah. let me give a chance to some of the, the interns to also ask some questions. Uh, uh, Lynn, any questions on your side for Mr. Gino? Um, for me, I think I'm okay. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. it's already pretty clear to me. Thank right. you. Let's go next to Gabby. Any questions on your side, Gabby? Honestly, I don't have any questions, but I oh. want to say it's really interesting to me. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, Gabby, the, I think your mic is not on, so I don't know. We <laughs> couldn't, couldn't hear you on that one, yeah? So I want to try it again. Hello? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah, go ahead, Gabby. Um, hello. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I think I don't have any questions right now, but I am really. I want to say that I'm really interested. I'm really interested in how uh, you're telling how the marketing works for your brand and how storytelling and the community is matters so much. It's really insightful, and I'm taking the notes on that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank you. And Eileen, Eileen. No problem. I'm well. happy to share. Okay. Thank you. And uh, anything from Eileen? Mm, I'm good too. I'm just finding this very insightful. Okay. Fantastic. But no questions for now. All right. Sounds good. Um, okay. Uh, that's pretty much, let's go back to the, the BB team. Uh, Shintia, any final thoughts or questions or anything on your side? Um, nope. Uh, thank you, sir. That's uh, good on me. Uh, thank you, Gino, for sharing. And I'm looking forward uh, for uh, our you, next uh, communication. I will contact you through email. That's all, Hello. sir. Uh, and also, Cynthia, I yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, sorry uh, for if you wanted the, the 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 contact of that Coca Cola, you can ask my number through Jing. I can share you by WhatsApp. Ah, definitely. Cool. It's thank easier. You. It's faster. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Let's go to, uh, let's see. Uh, Gunny, anything on your side? I'm ready. Nope. All good. Uh, it's your, uh, do you know, uh, sorry, it's very, very inspired me, <laughs> inspired the likes. <laughs> thank you very much, Dino. Fantastic. Okay. Excellent. Let's go next to Risa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all good, sir. And thank you, Gino, for your, uh, uh, telling your experience and everything. It's very delightful. Okay. Thank you, Rizal. And to Aldo. No problem. Happy to share. Yeah, I think uh, that it is a very interesting talk. And thank you so much for uh, having uh, your talk with us and uh, sparing your time. And wish uh, we have uh, some good mm -hmm. collaboration ahead. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. All right, thank you. Sure, no problem. Happy to help. Okay, thank you guys very much for coming in. And Gino, thank you so much uh, today for sharing your wisdom and knowledge and and this beautiful history about about brand, thank you, about, you. about uh, the, the evolution of surf culture. I think this is a very, you know, this is one of the most authentically Bali startup masterclasses we've ever had because most of the time when we do this, we, we ask these people from outside of Bali what they think about marketing. but. But this is this is very um, this is very like local. I like it. So oh, one last thing. So we're gonna give Gina a thumbs up and write you a recognition post on LinkedIn. We'll share it out to to our YouTube too as well. So uh, for a moment, can I get everyone to give a uh, thumbs up? Yeah. One, two, and three. Okay, great. Snapshot. Um, so Gina, I'll have I'll have some of the team write you uh, some posts, and we look forward to keeping in touch. I'll share your number with Cynthia so that she can get in touch. And, uh, and oh yeah, I probably need to ask about Ty Graham too. Gino, where do you live? I, I, I want to hang out with you. You sound like such an interesting person. You got like so many good stories. Yep. 